What's up, rock stars? It's Rocks with a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blog, so let's get to it. All right, you guys, so we have to do the serious before we get to the bullshit. First story up, the London attacks. You guys, I just, I honestly do not know what is going on in the world today. It's so much evil and so much hate and so much terror. I feel so bad for the world that my children and my children's children have to grow up in. Now to the point where if I let my anxiety get the best of me, I will be terrified for my children to be out and about pretty much anywhere. You know, you used to say you want to travel and see the world and all of that, but look what is going on all over the world. I don't know why in my mind. I always thought of the UK as a safe place. You know, we put in our minds the whole romantic thoughts of London and Paris and all of that. And then this, okay. So as of yesterday, eight people have died from the latest terror attacks in London. And that was by men who had both ran down folks on the London Bridge as well as on foot wielded knives and machetes and stabbed pretty much anybody that they came into contact with and was killing them. We've all seen the video that they've put up on the internet, on the news shows, on cable, and it is just an unfathomable, (laughs) my braces y'all, thought that, you know, you just taking a casual stroll or out somewhere to eat dinner could end up in this kind of way. Eight people so far have died. Um, They said dozens of people were injured. And it is really a frightening, scary thing. I mean, I guess that is what the terrorist goals are, is to create confusion and chaos and terror. And if that is definitely the goal, they are succeeding. The police did kill the men that were wielding the knives. They killed them within, I think they said, eight minutes of them going around and killing. But you guys have to realize, eight minutes of people walking around and stabbing folks, that is a long ass time. Now the police did kill those three, like I said. Their names were uh, 22-year-old Youssef Zagba, 27-year-old Karam Shazad Butt, and 30-year-old Rashid Red Duane. And then there's been many others that have been arrested in connection with both of these attacks. Um, this comes on the heels of the attacks just last I know I talked about it in my last top of the blogs with Ariana Grande, Ariana Grande's concert and them, the suicide bombers blowing themselves up. And then she went back to Manchester to have her one Manchester concert, the benefit for the victims in that attack. And the day before her, this, you know, her second concert, then this happened. So it is just. I mean, I mean, I I know I would have been terrified if I was that girl, but you got to do what you got to do and you got to show strength and you can't let these things run you off. But just, I mean, imagine the amount of rattled nerves that you would have knowing that you're back in a place where people have, for whatever reason, targeted your concerts to kill folks, okay, or somewhere around that time, so... Very, very terrible. I know that they said that it is in imminent danger there. I told you guys that last week that they were expecting many more attacks like this. And I guess them listening to the chatter and the black web or dark web or whatever it's called and everything else, um, they, they realize that they have a lot over there that they are going to have to deal with. And it is really, really unfortunate. One of my rock stars, oh, I didn't get her name. And you guys know us on Snapchat. She Snapchatted me and told me that actually she lived next door to one of the terrorists. Go figure. And that she actually couldn't believe that he had done something like that because he was a nice guy. And, you know, and you hear these stories all the time. Like, that's why it's so crazy to think that people can have so much hate in their heart but live day to day amongst the people and do all of these things. Like, it is just... You can't even reconcile the two because it makes absolutely no sense. But yeah, I want to say a special shout out to that rock star. I am so uh, mad at myself for not getting your name or not remembering your name. (sighs) 
I don't want to say. I, I, I don't remember the name. But anyway, you know who you are. My prayers are out to you and yours as well as everybody else over there. They have to deal with this and really all of us because everybody is vulnerable and, um, you know, we're going to have to just cover ourselves. I, I don't really know what else. Say a prayer over yourself and your family every day that we don't have to meet these type of ends like the rest of these people have just terrible okay so yeah like i said prayers up for the families the victims uh all the residents over there just the world the world is a scary dangerous and upsetting place these days you guys so <clears throat> that's all i wanted to say um we had to give a shout out to those over in London and um, hopefully those that are responsible. They're saying that ISIS is claiming responsibility for these attacks. Um, but hopefully those are brought to justice. Real talk with Bill Maher. Do you guys watch the show? I watch the show every Friday night. And on this one particular show, Bill was interviewing Senator Ben Sass. And they were having a regular back and forth about Nebraska. Senator Sass had actually invited Bill, Bill Maher down to Nebraska to help out in the fields. Okay, And this is when Bill then uttered the unfortunate response of working in the fields. Okay, Senator, I am a house nigga. And uh, why he say that, y'all? <laughs> I knew as soon as he said those words that it was not a good idea and it's for obvious reasons i have told you guys this plenty of times you guys know my stance on it you as a white person cannot ever ever in this lifetime say the word nigga the minute you say it i don't give a fuck if it's in a joke i don't care if it's with some hatred behind it i don't care what it is the minute you say it you are going to be attacked for it and for whatever reason well not for whatever reason i think bill maher because he is on this show where he is praised for um, sometimes his not popular remarks or opinions on things i, I feel like he he just got a little bit too comfortable okay we know that bill maher has had black girlfriends in the past um we know that bill maher is liberal we know that he generally makes really good sense i do actually like bill maher and generally find myself agreeing with him of course there are some things that he says that i just just can't get with but that's the thing with Bill Maher on his show he does say things that can be um it's, it's not just racial things but he'll say things about religion you guys know that he is an atheist okay so he said some very he has said some very offensive things about religions um and he was never called to the to the carpet for that and you know he's he said things over the years well, people just kind of laugh it off because oh, well this is bill this is his show i mean he's already kind of politically incorrect um and you know like i said the man is smart but <laughs> all that being said i don't give a fuck who you are if you are white you cannot say nigga 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 i don't give a fuck every marginalized group out there has a word that is exclusive to their group and they can say it because they belong in the group but anybody outside of this group you can't say it because once you get to saying it then now you are offending this group it's just i'm sorry it's just a club that people belong to now i've had people on my channel many times say to me roxanne you should not say the word nigga they get upset they get offended and I, i'm fine with that i get it it is a word that has a lot of energy behind it and sometimes is negative however that is not how i feel about the word it has not affected me um in the way where i feel um you know i maybe god is still dealing with me <laughs> okay but i don't feel bad when i say the word nigga i get it if you don't want to say that word and that's fine too to each his own but i'm saying it's to each his own for anybody that is black anybody that's outside of, i mean it's just as simple as that it is just as simple as that now you know people were calling for bill maher to be fired from his show and for them to remove his show from the um uh, you know, from HBO and, and all of this and calling him a racist and all that. I do not think that Bill Maher is a racist. I watch him all the time. I think he just got entirely too comfortable and thought that it was going to be okay that people were... But 
no, I don't think that he's a racist, and I don't think that his show should be canceled. But I would understand if it did, because in this racial time where everybody is so super sensitive, okay, and we've seen countless of people lose their jobs over um, saying racist, racist shit, I would have understood if they did get rid of his show. It would have been sad if it happened, but this was one of those situations where he did not lose his show, and people are saying that. The main reason why he didn't lose his show is because HBO is a pay-for channel and they don't rely on advertisement. They rely on people who actually subscribe to their channel. And they don't expect people to stop subscribing to HBO because of all the other beneficial programming that's on that channel. They don't expect people to you know, cut their HBO subscription because of what Bill Maher did. So they're going to take a gamble on it. They're letting him keep his show. I'm sure the show tomorrow night will be all about, well, not all about, but a good portion of it will be about what he said and how he's sorry and all of that. I mean, he's already apologized for it. Um, some people say that it's insincere. I actually believe that it was sincere because a lot of times when you're talking and you're trying to be clever and you're a comedian, things come off the cuff, okay? And then afterwards, you sit and you think about what you should or should not have said. I do it myself on this very, very, very small scale. When I'm watching my videos, when I'm editing my videos, I'll sit back and I'll be like, fuck, I shouldn't have said that. I might even cut it out. I will think about jokes. I was talking to Alex about this recently. I will think about jokes that I could have done. Um, I would have thought about uh, opportunities where I could have got a good laugh, um, you know, and I'll be frustrated with myself for letting it pass. And I mean, you know, so you do be your own critic. So I, I do believe in, the, in that sense that, you know, he sat back afterwards and realized that maybe he should not have said that word. And I don't give a fuck if he say it in, you know, his own private space. Because to keep it real with you guys, we all say shit when we at the house. We say and do shit that we would not necessarily say and do if we were in the public eye. Okay, I have opinions sometimes that I have to mute when I be on this channel because I realize that it would not be good for my, <laughs> it would not be good for me. And everybody does that if we were going to keep it 100. So I don't think a show should be canceled, um, but we will see if the pressure continues to stay on him. This man got out of his car and just stared at me like, what is she doing? You just gonna keep on looking. I'm gonna wave at him. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> anyway, as of now, he's safe. And like I said, if social media pressure and if the this story goes on and on and on, then maybe that will change. But yeah, I mean, even if I like you, we we got to call a spade a spade. <laughs> No pun intended there. If you do shit that people don't like, then you have to suffer the consequences. And that's how it is in all aspects of life. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But you guys tell me what you think about Bill Maher. Do you believe that he should keep his job? Do you believe that he should be fired? Do you believe that he is a racist? However you feel about it, leave it in the comments section below. All right, you guys, now let's talk about Tiny and uh, Tamar. I know y'all thought I was going to say T.I., huh? No, you didn't think that. That's all we seem to talk about these days. That Tiny is staying in social media. I would be tired of it if I was her. But uh, I guess if you're a celebrity, you're a superstar, okay, you got to deal with the good and the bad of being in the public eye. Now, the bad part of it, you have to live your life with everybody giving an opinion, looking in, not necessarily giving you the best criticisms. It's a lot of pressure on these people, I would imagine. Okay, now we are all privy to the fact that Tiny and Tamar have had some sort of rift in their friendship over the last year or so. And we thought, or people would say when it first happened, that it was because uh, Tamar was upset with Tiny, as well as M Monica and Toya um, and Sh uh, Sh uh, Shekinah, Shekinah, whatever the child's name is, for going on to The Real, the show that she was fired from. We all kind of thought of that as being petty because fuck business is business and people going on these shows, you know, we're not going to turn down a business opportunity to promote whatever it is that we are promoting um, in the name of friendship. I mean, it's cool if you do do it, but we cannot expect everybody to do that. Okay, so when Tiny and Tamar had their rift, 
we, we knew about it. And it was big news for a minute there, but that, like anything else, it just died away. But over the year, them two have not been friends. They have not spoken. And then it kind of came back to the forefront a couple of weeks ago when there was a picture of a little girl that was posted and Tamar said something like, oh, I wish I had a daughter. And Diane, Tiny's mother, came on and said, well, you have a goddaughter that you haven't spoken to in over a year. You haven't seen her or anything. Why don't you treat that child as your daughter, considering she's your goddaughter? Okay, so that kind of brought it back to the forefront. Now we're reminded that them two were not friends, um, that they were no longer speaking. We moved on from that. Tamar, I don't believe, responded to her. Now here it is, Logan's birthday. The boy is turning four years old and Tiny posts on social media. Happy birthday to Logan. You look so handsome in this picture. And, you know, I love you and I miss you and, you know, all of that. T.I. then chimed in, you know, yeah, I love to see this. Happy birthday to Logan. Okay, now it's time for you, Tiny and Tamar, to make up. You guys are adults, okay? Get past the diva shit. I kind of looked at that like, this is going to be something. But I was just like, okay, well, I mean, he is encouraging these two women to become friends again. After that, Tamar posted a very long and what some consider a heartfelt apology to uh, Tiny, urging and asking for their friendship to be rekindled. Now, that is what some people think. <laughs> I am not one of those people. I felt like that apology was more so about attention seeking. We all couldn't ignore the fact that she was being shady when she talked about Toya. That whole apology might have gone over better had she not even included Toya in there. Because even if Tiny and Tamar and Toya know the reasons why they were no longer friends, we didn't need to know none of that. If you apologize and just apologize, why are you talking about it? First of all, why is anybody talking, doing all this shit on social media and not on the fucking phone? I just, I just, now I get the fact that they're social people and they're stars and people, you know, we, we all have, a, have been vested in their friendship, so I guess maybe we should be included in the making up, but to me, it just seems like it's entirely too much for the world to see. Because like I said, people have opinions. So once you put that out there for everybody else to see, then of course they're going to have an opinion on that. So my opinion is it was not heartfelt. It was not sincere. Okay. It was her trying to be shady and also say like, oh, I'm not like everybody else that's trying to down your marriage and, you know, be negative nannies. Why don't we all get back together and be in love and be happy? The thing with that is Tiny is the one that told us that T.I. was fucking the girl in the group. Tiny is the one that told us this. Up until until now, nobody has 100% admitted it until they came on the show. So now we know we got concrete evidence. I said creek. <laughs> I meant concrete evidence that T.I. fucked the girl. So it's not just us making up shit or trying to be negative. Because I think for the most part, most of us want Tiny to be happy. And for the most part, many people had Tiny and T.I.'s back. I mean, I promise you, people was in my comments all the time, you know, big up in those two. When I was just like, this nigga is full of shit. I've been saying it for years. And nobody was really believing it. Folks had them. So now all of a sudden she's trying to make it seem like, oh, she's the one that's supportive. And Listen, let me not even go there because the bottom line is she's trying to be supportive um, as far as she is concerned. She's trying to make friends with her, her friend Tiny. Um, and that part is good. Okay, you guys know how I feel about women relationships and friendships. It is important to have girlfriends. Anytime I see a, a woman and she tell me she ain't got, she don't, you know, she don't get along with women and she don't, you know, then I look at you, I got a side eye for you. Because there's absolutely no reason why a woman shouldn't be able to find one thing in common with another fucking woman. Okay, we are women. Okay, you should be able to have some sort of place where you guys can meet and have a connection in that way. So all I can say is when a motherfucker say that they ain't they, they a woman and they can't deal with women, it's two things. Either everybody in your circle is fucked up and you need to let them all go and find somebody else or something wrong with you. Okay, I'm getting off track though. So without all the other negative parts of what Tamar said calling T Toya paperback Toya, the apologies seem to have worked. Tiny, after she saw that, 
she put in those very same comments for Tamar that, you know what? We will always be friends. You will always be my child's godparent. Okay, we've known each other for 19 years. You will be my longest friend. I love you. Even if we aren't friends right now, you know, right or wrong, you're going to always be, you know, we just having a little, we just having a little riff right now. But, you know, maybe it's time to make up. So I was just like, well, even though this shit got me looking like, mm, maybe the shit worked but wait a minute <laughs> like i said she added toya in there unnecessarily so when you talk about somebody and you talk about them negatively then you cannot not expect them to want to say something back to you so toya went into her instagram and wasn't no you know no shady shit or nothing honey she came directly for um tamar stoke she said fuck you bitch you is the fakest bitch that I know. Okay, you want to say that we not friends, but you don't want to say why we not friends. The fact that somebody posted a happy birthday message when you got upset, okay, because Tamar does strike me as one of those ones that is very territorial about her friends because she don't have many. And so a lot of times when people don't have many friends, you know, they want to hold on to their own friend and this is my best friend and nobody else can be their friends and all of that. So she strikes me as the type that can be that way. But yeah, Toya said, you are the most over the top under the table ass bitch that I know I said oh <laughs> she how she goes hard for the attention and you know always tries to you know throw the rock hide her hand I mean we've talked about all these things with Tamar and uh, yeah I 100% believe it's true so yeah Toya read the fuck out of Tamar and was like Fuck you. And I was here for it only because Toya, T Tamar should have never, all these fucking teas. Tamar should have never included Toya in the apology. Now, if you want to talk to Ta T T uh, Tiny off the record and discuss it then, and then, you know, talk about whatever Toya did, and all, that's another thing. But we, we, why are we doing all this on it? I'm just, I. I just, I'm so sick of Tamar. She is extra, but she's always been extra. We've heard stories about how she treats her friends. Um, we see that she recycles group after group of friends. You know, these this one getting, she, you know, this set of gay guys make her mad. And so she dropped them and then she pick up a new set and a new set and a new set. And they seem to come out of the blue. So I don't, I don't feel bad that that's how that whole thing went down. Tamar was asking for it. Then of course, Tiny tried to smooth it over and say oh you guys need to talk to because I mean a lot of shit has happened and you guys just need to sit down and talk because you guys were once friends as well okay again why is we doing all this on social media <laughs> call them on the fucking phone obviously your phone work y'all typing and twittering and tweeting and instagramming and all of that so why we can't call each other and then I got a lot of comments yesterday on Instagram where people were saying you know why don't you talk about Regine and the fact that she's always inserting herself in grown folks business okay let me just say this. Okay, first of all, Regine is 18 years old, so she is not a child any longer. Now, we are probably going to always look at her as Toya's child, as Lil Wayne's child. But there comes a time where you 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 have to understand that this girl is going to have an opinion. That, that somebody is talking about her parents. It's not like she's just inserting herself in some beef that was going on. You specifically talking about this girl's mother. I don't see why anybody would think that somebody wouldn't want to defend their mother like that. Again, not the best way to be, but the girl is about to go to college. She has an opinion too. So I don't see a problem per se with her having something to say. I don't think what she said was all that rude. And yes, like I said, she can, she could have held her comments altogether. But if she chose to comment on it, then... I can't be mad either because if somebody was really going in on me terribly like that, I would imagine that my children would want to do the same. And I'm talking about Jada. <laughs> and Jada is 16. Now, I would try to really keep her from that because then the child gets attacked. Um, and, you know, now everybody's all mad at Regine for what she said. But my daughter is very, very opinionated very i mean i get why this child decided to say what she wanted to say um i i just tamar needs to learn how to control herself i don't think tamar can do that i think that tamar has so many issues i think she loves the attention i just i just this is just tamar and she's always going to be shady like that she can't she just can't help herself so um 
That's it. What do you guys think about Tiny and Tamar and Toya? Whose side are you on? Did you believe that the apology was sincere? Did you believe that there was some shade laced in there? Or do you agree with me that all of this shit could have been handled away from the social media um, spectrum? Whatever y'all think, leave it below. Child, I talked about that forever. Let me get on with this damn video. So, uh, Derek and Gloria, they were headed home, I presume, after a night out on the town up in uh, Los Angeles. They were on the 405 freeway, I believe, um, in the 2015 Cadillac Escalade that Gloria had. And there was some sort of, uh, Derek, so Derek was driving. Some way he lost control of the car. I believe they said that he was a quick lane change and it was a truck that came by and cut him off and he swerved around and hit the guardrail and then he tipped the car over and was in the middle of the damn freeway. Okay, upside down. Him and Gloria, both in this car. When the police arrived, they realized that Derek Fisher had been drinking. He was driving under the influence. At least that's what they suspected. And they arrested him. So he was taken in. Okay. Did I mention <laughs> that this 2015 Cadillac Escalade that they were driving, that it was registered and belonged to ex-husband of Gloria Govan, Matt Barnes. <laughs> I know that man boy was mad at the motherfucker when he found out about that. I know he was down there. Now he was trying to figure out how the fuck he can get down to Los Angeles and whoop Derek Fisher's ass one more time and then get back to his game that was happening later on that night in Sacramento. That motherfucker Derek Fisher got the nerve to fuck Matt's woman and then tear up his goddamn car too. <laughs> oh, I know that man was hot. Girl, you got to be more careful. <laughs> they say that he was driving drunk. Um, Derek Fisher just has had a string of bad luck since this whole hookup with Gloria Govan. I'm not saying that it's a bad relationship. I'm sure they love each other very much. Whatever. But um, as far as the social, just as far as the social media side is concerned, it just seems like it's been one thing after a fuck another with those two. Now he did admit that uh he was under the influence you know and that he shouldn't have done that i mean so he's admitted to it wouldn't y'all have liked to hear that conversation that you know gloria and matt had on the phone she was just like um so Bay went on to tow your shit up <laughs> oh no that man was too fucking fit to be tied i'm only laughing because nobody was hurt everybody came out unscathed and uh, you know if we've said it once we've said it a million times you do not have to drive drunk especially with uber i mean you are fucking millionaires so why can't you have a driver when you know that you have been drinking so i mean I, uh, people reminded me when i was feeling sorry for a tiger the other day that you know you just got to be responsible for what you do and that's very much true so Matt said, let me hurry up and win this fucking championship on Saturday, and then I'm getting down there, and that's your ass, Derek. <laughs> you guys saw the trial is underway for Bill the Peel. <laughs> Should I call him that? I do feel bad when I say that, you guys. I know, I know. Let me, Bill Cosby, his trial is underway. I think we're around, somewhere around day four of this trial, where Miss Andrea Constan is pressing charges against him for, you know, sexual assault, rape, drug-induced rape, and all of this. I think they said that she has finally finished her testimony and cross-examination. And uh, from what I could read when I read up on the updates of the trial, uh, she has been given pretty damaging testimony. Of course, it is the defense's job to poke holes in her story and find inconsistencies, and there have been those things. However, when I read up on the story, it just seems like what she is saying um, is believable, has been, for the most part, quite consistent. She is a fairly good witness. Um, she did have a little breakdown cry, but for the most part, she's been pretty stable and level and just answering the questions. So it's just my personal opinion that she's not lying that Bill Cosby did do this. Um, and the problem with giving your opinion on this Bill Cosby um, situation is this. In this day and age of racial divide, 
we as black people sometimes find ourselves having to make a decision on whether we're going to be loyal to a certain person or if we are going to believe a story that might go against the loyalties for that certain person. When you believe that something is right and it is against a person who was so once highly esteemed as a Bill Cosby and him being a black person, a very powerful and strong black person in the community, it makes you start to feel guilty when you actually believe this woman who is not black, who is, um, you know, when you see her, you kind of looking like, oh, Bill's going to be fucking her. I mean, you know, you you just kind of in your mind start to have these guilty feelings of saying, you know what, maybe I should be more supportive of Bill Cosby because you are, you know, innocent until you're proven guilty. And, you know, they did do him wrong, you know, because you hear about other people getting into these cases and um, being accused of rape and things. And um, they don't lose everything like Bill Cosby did. So, you know, you feel bad. I honestly believe that Bill Cosby did it because I can remember hearing stories, whisperings about these kind of things over the years. And the fact that Bill Cosby was such this strong, powerful black person in Hollywood, um, I think that a lot of that stuff got pushed under the table. There's been settlements with him and other people that have accused him of these things. Um, and even he has admitted in certain testimonies and depositions that he's done these things. But of course, the only difference is that he said it was consensual and the other people are saying that it isn't. So, you know, you just get all these feelings like, damn, like, ugh. you just have to make a personal decision on whether or not you believe the story. And that is the personal decision that I believe. I believe that Bill Cosby did it. And I've told you guys this before. Her testimony, I believe that she's probably going to be the only person that actually makes it to trial because everybody else that kind of admit you know accused him of this it was way long ago and the 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 um the time has lapsed they can't sue him like this so she is the only one so she's sort of like the the person the representative of all these women that have accused him of the same type of thing um and uh, granted i do realize that there are people that jumped on the bandwagon that bill cosby you know he was was he fucking everybody in hollywood okay i mean i guess it could have happened but i'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt that he didn't do that to all of those women some people jumped on um but i just can't imagine that all of the women are lying. If she's just the one person that gets to sue, then yes, I admire Bill Cosby for the things that he has achieved. He is a genius comedian. He's a philanthropist. He has given money to further the education of black men and women um, going into colleges and universities. He made us proud to see him on the television show. I mean, he, his show alone, The Cosby Show, um, was responsible for really curtailing the L.A. riots. That could have went on for a few more days, but it got curtailed a whole lot because we were home watching the, the Cosby show. That is huge that a show had that much power over the black community and really the world at the time. So I will never forget that Bill Cosby did what he did. But no matter how long it takes for you to come, you know, have to face your accuser in justice, um, hey... There comes a time when you got to pay the piper. They say that um, Keisha Knight Pulliam did accompany him on the first day of trial. And she said that she did it because she would want somebody to do the same for her had she been accused for something like this. And I guess slowly but surely as the days go on, there have been a few other people that have been there in support of Bill Cosby. But for the most part, people are staying away, just watching it unfold on TV or just in the news blips like the rest of us. But uh, yeah, that's, that's it. That's how I feel about Bill Cosby. It's always um, a pull on my conscience of whether or not I should believe this woman or if I should really just ignore all of the evidence and things that have been said in the past and just support Bill Cosby because of what he has done. He ain't did shit really for me, but you know, for the community as a whole. But I just can't. I can't. I'm sorry, you guys. I feel that he's done it. And um, even though it's sad to see that he is now 79 years old, I mean, fuck, he's the same age as my dad. I would not want to see my dad going through something like this. He looks so broken. He does not look like the Bill Cosby that we all know. They say that he's paranoid. They say that um, he even gets confused sometimes. It does not really always 100% understand the gravity of the situation. I mean, you know, it's just the whole story is sad. How y'all feel? Y'all feel like me? 
We'll see what happens. I don't know what happens in the end of the ca of a case like this. What does there is there a possibility that the man might go to jail? Terrible. We'll see though. <laughs> And then in quick quickies, we found out the other day that my boy Gucci, y'all know I love me some Gucci, man, and uh, Keisha, his girlfriend, longtime girlfriend, fiance, the one that everybody says stuck by him as he was in jail and turned him into a better man once he got out. They now have their own show, The Wobsters, that will be debuting on BET. It is going to follow them in their lives as they prepare for their wedding in October. So that will be coming to BET soon. Somebody left in my um, IG comments that she has three kids, supposedly, in Jamaica that she left behind and never, ever um, talks about them or even claims them now i looked all over the internet for that story um and there are you know people are saying shit like that but we ain't had nobody confirm it we ain't seen pictures of these kids nobody from the family has come out and say oh yeah yeah she is a you know deadbeat mama she ain't doing this she ain't doing it i haven't seen nothing there was some story that was on media takeout and honey y'all know how i feel about media takeout i am not even going to click on that story because most of the time they are bullshit so i as of now don't know if that's story is true or not but if it's you know as she becomes more and more in the public eye these two it will come out if there's some kids some damn where you nosy ass motherfuckers out there we'll find them but congratulations on the two looking forward to seeing their reality show peter from real housewives of atlanta they say that he's got a new boo okay supposedly she is the general manager at his club one sports one you know rep restaurants and clubs out there peter even proclaimed his love to her on Snapchat. He said, I love you, and then messaged her IG name as the Queen Tony. Now, I ain't had time to be looking her up and trying to figure out who she is, but she's a cute enough girl. Um, you know, not all glammed up and everything like a Cynthia would be, but um, looks like a, you know, good, fine. I mean, what do you expect? These two are divorced now. Everybody got to move on with their life. I'm sure we'll see that Cynthia will eventually find her new man as well. She says she ain't getting married no more. But um, this is all natural and normal. Um, and uh, so good for him, child. In white people news, congratulations to George Clooney and his wife, Amal. They had their twins, Ella and Alexander, a boy and a girl. Twins is what's in right now in Hollywood. You guys know that. They had their baby. We are still expecting um, Beyonce and Jay-Z's twins, um, red and white. They should be making a debut any day now, they say. And um, yeah, good, good for them. They say that the Cloonies are going to raise their children over in um are they in london i believe they are away from the paparazzi and on their island of their home so congratulations to the clunies and lastly you guys that 444 that was popping up all over new york and everybody thought it had something to do with jay-z and beyonce well it ain't got nothing to do with them <laughs> okay y'all motherfuckers look beyonce is like let me get rid of these babies Nigga with these fat ass knees and ankles and hot sweating. Let me get these babies off and then I promise you next year I'm going to give y'all everything you need. Okay, it was not them. Well, kind of might have a little bit of a Jay-Z involved only because it actually has something to do with the title exclusive. They say that uh, Lupita Nyong'o, uh, Maharshala, Maharshala, Mahershala Ali and Danny Glover have some sort of exclusive that is coming out on title. And that is what 444 is. I'm not sure if that's the name. I'm not sure if that's the time that it'll drop. I'm not quite sure what the 444 still means, but it will be coming soon exclusively to title. Now, what was interesting is that it had an NC-17 rating, and I was like, oh, NC-17 means that absolutely nobody under 17 can see this. So then you start thinking, um, so what? Okay, usually NC-17 are, movies are rated that because of um, some sex in the movie. They say that if a movie has more than 40 seconds of constant sex, then they usually will get an NC-17. They also say that if there is some face in the place involved, specifically face in the place, not blowjobs, because we have seen women give men blowjobs in movies all the time. But if it is a man giving the woman a face in the place and we can see it, that will get an NC-17. Uh, they also say full frontal nudity for a man or a woman that lasts longer than just a flash. Okay, that will get an NC-17. But usually, sex is the reason for this NC-17. So I'm just like, oh, going to see what happens here. I'm here. I'm here for a sexual hookup between Lupita and um, Mahershala. I, 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 could, I could do 
that. I could do that. But then I started thinking about Danny Glover getting mixed up in there. And I'm just like, oh, child. Don't fuck up my wet dream, honey. Because I don't want to see a Danny Lupita. I definitely don't want to see a Mahershala Danny. And I don't want to see a Danny Mahershala Lupita threesome either. So, <laughs> we'll see. But it's definitely NC-17, so... Well, I might be a little hot and bothered now. <laughs>、Okay?